tonight on Bobcat Breakdown. Quinnipiac men's soccer won its first game of the season. We take a look at how they did and how we expect them to finish out the season. Plus, men's hockey took on Arizona State. We'll tell you how they did and which freshman is leading the way. And we sat down with Jess Gargan of the women's soccer team. All that and more starting now on Bobcat Breakdown. Welcome to Bobcat Breakdown. I'm Andrew Weiss, alongside the Michael Jordan, my Scotty Pippen, Rob Siambra. Thanks, Andrew. The Quinnipiac women's soccer team lost in overtime to Manhattan, one nothing on Wednesday. The loss was the Bobcats' seventh overall loss and fourth in conference play. On Saturday, the Bobcats traveled to Canisius and defeated the Golden Griffins. But Andrew, after a hot start to the season, the Bobcats have lost three of their last five, all in conference play. What do the Bobcats need to do to build off their success from this earlier this season? Well, they need to get back to the basics, and that's something that they worked on earlier this season, something that they showed in non-conference play. There's the surprise of the season. They're doing a lot better than everyone expected them to do. A lot of teams, a lot of people had them written off, easy win, and they're still in it in that conference play. So they need to get back to what they've been doing correctly, they need to get back to scoring goals like they have, and just not worrying about going out there and playing a tougher team when they can be the tough team. I don't disagree with you, but I think they need to pick up the shots on net. They have a lot of shots coming from the team, but not all of them are hitting the net. You got uh, Gil, Gargan, and Cassio all in the double digits uh, numbers in shots on goal. They need to get that from all the other players as well. Jess Fontaine is at nine. They're, she's doing well, but the rest of the team needs to pick that up. Also, the defense needs to be a bit stronger, in my opinion. But I think they're, right now, I don't think, you know, they're definitely not out of it, obviously. I think they're looking good right now, especially the win. Uh, Saturday, they're looking better, and I think you know things are looking up. Yep, that three nothing win over Canisius, just an absolute beautiful performance all around. Defense, offense, everyone had a great game out there. If they can continue to do that throughout the following weeks, they should be a good lock for that MAC tournament. So, who do you think has been the biggest surprise for uh, Dave Clark this season? Well, the biggest surprise for Dave Clark, head coach, I'd have to put with Nadia Gill and her fellow freshmen, especially Nadia Gill, as uh, my my main focus. You know, you have a girl who's coming into this school; she's young. You know, freshmen aren't exactly expected to go out there and do what she's done right away. Leaves the team in game-winning goals. She's gone out there. She's been a clutch performer for her team. That double overtime win a few weeks ago when she scored the game winner, she's had a fantastic season. And for me, she's the biggest surprise because you don't expect someone at her age to go out there and just perform with the skill level and the capability that she has. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. You know, with uh, Gil and Gargan, you know, it seems like Quinnipiac, Sort of, they hit gold mines, not just with soccer, but with all their sports as well. I mean, you look at the women's soccer team with Sion Ferrano and uh, Sam Escavich, men with Sam Ass a few years ago. The women's soccer team now, you know, Gil has been huge this year. 16 years old, she's doing so much for them already. So it's definitely, uh, definitely been a big year for her. And you got to look to see what she can do in the future as well. And how about, you know, all the freshmen as a whole? You know, they definitely really have sort of carried the team this year with the way. Uh, Dave Clark had, did his recruiting over the summer. Oh, absolutely. You look at, as we mentioned, Nadia Gill, Jess Gargan, putting shots not only on net, but in the back of the net. And that's been a problem for the men's soccer team. But the women's soccer team hasn't had that with the help of their freshmen. And that's been huge, especially for Dave Clark coming in here. Maybe not necessarily in the hot seat, but women's soccer team has not been hot in previous seasons. This year, they're still alive in MAC play. They're doing a great job out there. And the freshmen especially are leading the way, scoring goals, playing solid defense. <coughs> Excuse me. And then overall, they've just been fantastic. I definitely agree. And plus, you also got to look on the defense as well. People who aren't mentioned as often, like Sarah Kate Norton, she's had a pretty strong year so far. You know, sort of, I wouldn't say carrying the defense, but she's definitely been part of it. She's definitely, you know, did, did her share of work so far this season. And she's definitely going to be looked upon in the last few games in the season and into the postseason as well. Well, as we've been discussing, the Bobcats have seen a lot of their scoring coming from their underclassmen this season. Three of the team's goals have been scored by Jess Gargan. Q30 Sports' Gabby Riggi sat down with the freshmen before their 3 0 win over Canisius. Check it out. Um, well, first I came in and I was playing up forward, so I was more of like assistant and goals, but lately I've been playing midfield, so it's a different role for me, but I like it. It's like I get on the ball more and I can travel with it and play it off, but I have to have shots as well, but it's good, yeah. It's good like playing, playing in like Nadia up front and Fontaine and that because they're great players to get off. So moving position, no, because I'm used to it. Like at home, I played a lot of positions, but the defensive midfield is a new one. But 
I'm ready to take it on and try my best and do my best for the team because I don't really mind where I play once I'm playing. Well, so I got like an agent who like goes around different colleges and talks to coaches and everything. And so Dave came in contact with me. So I was talking to him and the fact that he was Irish really helped. So, and another girl on my team had been over here. So she had all good things to say about it. So then I did a bit of research on it. And then I came over last October, like this time last year. And um, I loved it when I came and I get, got to watch a match and they won and it was great. And I loved the campus as well. So once I did a bit of research on it, I, um, I really liked it. Even though like America and Ireland, like same language and everything, there's still a lot of differences. And the fact that there's Irish girls and foreign girls on the team really helped the transition. I suppose we put a bit more pressure on ourselves because there were so many coming in that like there was high expectations, 13 freshmen coming in, like they obviously wanted to change. So we had to try to prove that we we're going to do that. So coming in, it was like, it was difficult at the start. And I'd say it was difficult for the upperclassmen because there were so many new players coming in, but they've done a great job in helping us transition. And they've been really good to us both on and off the pitch and their role models to us. And they've kept their feet on the ground, which is really important because as such a big class, they have to make sure that we're all doing the right thing on and off the pitch. So they've done a great job of it. For this season, we've four games left, which we need to win three if we want to qualify for the MAC. So that's our main goal. And um, we have to take each game as it come, comes and prepare for it, right? So that includes both on and off the pitch. Like we can't just turn up to a match expecting to win. So we're preparing for it today and from every day on from now and just trying our best in practice and matches to do our best. And over the next four years, I want to progress as a player and make the team a better team and let's hopefully win the MAC and then qualify as well. It'd be great. Quinnipiac women's rugby lost to Central Washington on, on Sunday, excuse me, 33 to 12. Alona Marr and Flora Poole each scored a try for Quinnipiac in the loss. Quinnipiac is now 5-2 and, and has three games remaining in the regular season. They will travel to Springfield, Massachusetts on Thursday to take on the American International College Yellow Jackets. Still to come on Bobcat Breakdown, women's soccer isn't the only team getting scoring from its freshmen. We'll talk about the Bobcats men's hockey team and its 3-0 start to the season in our Buy or Sell segment. Stay with us. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203 239 6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. My name is Doug Thoreau. For nearly 90 years, three generations of my family have been providing the highest quality repair service. Insurance companies will refer car owners to lesser quality shops to save money. At Thoreau Auto Body, we provide the highest quality repairs with a lifetime guarantee to maintain the safety and value of your car. That's the quality you deserve. Thoreau Auto Body, our best work goes unnoticed. We are your source for entertainment news. Welcome back to Bobcat Breakdown. The Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team is off to a 3-0 start to the season. The Bobcats shut out the Arizona State Sun Devils on Thursday 5-0, behind two goals and an assist from freshman Thomas Aldworth. After the game, the Texas native talked about the expansion of hockey in areas of the country that aren't traditional hockey markets, saying, quote, it's good to see the game expanding. I experienced it myself when the Dallas Stars won the Stanley Cup in 99. Hockey started booming around and hockey in Arizona will grow because of this Division I program. So it's nice to see the game expanding. Usually the guys down south don't get a good reputation for being hockey hotbeds like the places in the northeast, so I like to see it expand." Unquote. We move into our buy or sell segment now. Andrew, with ASU's hockey program being uh, in its first Division I season. Do you buy or sell that the Pac-12 will adopt hockey within the next 10 years? I'm buying. I'm going all in and buying this absolutely. Really? Arizona State, you know what, they came out here at Quinnipiac, didn't play their best hockey. They lost 5 nothing. didn't manage a whole lot of shots on goal, made us look like a very good team, which we are. However, Arizona State had a great program in club, moving on up, and there's further, excuse me, there's more club teams in the Pac-12 
area, Oregon, Washington, Oregon State, teams like that, that have performed exceptionally well in club hockey that can move up. You only need six teams for a division. So Pac-12 could easily take on these teams and start getting hockey to grow in that area. Yeah, but I think it's going to take a little longer than that. Yes, these are club teams, and yes, they're really good. But I don't see this happening in 10 years. I think it could be closer to 15, maybe even 20. Yeah, you're right. You only need a minimum of 16, so it could happen. But I still think it's going to take a lot longer than that. These teams still need to develop. These schools need to prepare these programs, get you know actual ice rinks, get them prepared to you know house all their students. You know, it's there's a lot that goes into this process. I mean, we look at ASU. They're sharing ice with the Phoenix Coyotes as well as other ranks. You know, and they're doing a great job making their way around the state. They were in Alaska two weeks ago, and they came this past weekend to Connecticut to face off against Quinnipiac, Yukon, and Sacred Heart. Yeah, so, but you make that point, but you have to realize that right there is the exact reason why the Pac-12 will grow in 10 years. They travel to Alaska, they come up here to Connecticut, that's a lot of travel for these guys. They don't, the NCAA does not want these guys going a thousand miles every time they want to play a team. 10 years is plenty of time for these teams to get into this, uh, into Division One hockey. That's only two years per team, if you want to do it by math, because you only need five more for this division. And I think that's an absolute possibility. And you talk about having these ice rinks around the area. Well, I come from a not very strong hockey market in Tampa. They have wonderful ice, uh, ice hockey there, perhaps not the same as up here in the Northeast, but they have plenty of room to grow. And I think that the Pac-12 will come into the area and into D1 hockey sooner than expected. All right, well, how about, let's move back to Quinnipiac. How about Thomas Aldworth? Do you buy or sell that he will lead the team in scoring this season? I'm buying it, absolutely buying really? it. Really? Yes, I'm buying it. Look at what he's done the last two games. Back-to-back -back games, three points. Yes, Arizona State. Yes, Holy Cross. These aren't, you know, your Minnesotas. These aren't your Boston Colleges. That doesn't take away from the fact that this kid's having a great year. He's on a tear right now. You know what? People thought Sam Annis, when he came into the league, when he came into Division One hockey, he was going to be good, but not as great as he was. Led the team in scoring his freshman year. Yes, I think but Thomas by one Aldridge point over Kellen thing. Jones. I still think you have Sam Annis, you have Travis St. Dennis, you have all these other players who are going to lead this team this year. I'm not... You can't discount the effort that Aldworth has put in and the stats that he's put up so far, but I don't think he's ready for that. You have to see uh, back, I think, coming in November 6th and 7th, when the Bobcats begin ECAC play, how the rest of the ECAC defends against him, because they're going to have a few more non-conference games after that, but the rest of it is going to be the ECAC, and they are tough opponents. ECAC, as we've seen these past few years, is coming to be one of the toughest divisions in college hockey, you know, battling the Hockey East. I think Aldworth has, we're going to have to wait and see how Aldworth responds to the defense of the other ECAC teams. Well, I feel as if that most ECAC defensive uh, pairings, top line, are going to go up against Sam Annis. They're going to go up against that top line, Sam Annis, Travis St. Dean, guys like that. You know what? Thomas Aldworth right now, still not a lot of game footage on him from Division One hockey. These guys aren't going to go out there and send their top two defensemen up against a freshman that they haven't seen a lot of. Yes, three points back-to-back -back games. He's already on a hot tear. He's already leading the team in scoring. So is right that now. not enough for these teams to already start preparing to play against him, regardless of what line I don't think it is. I feel like Sa I feel like Sam Annis is still the biggest concern for a lot of teams, and that's what they're going to prepare for. They're going to prepare for him going out there, a lot of shots from him. They're going to go out there and try to just match up defensively with Sam Annis in his line. If Thomas Aldworth moves up, which he probably won't be, considering their different styles of play, then you know maybe that changes. But right now, I feel as if Thomas Aldworth has the advantage of going up against that second defensive pair, has the advantage of going out there, and he's played exceptionally well. Look at one of his goals against uh, Arizona State the other day. I watched him come to the zone. He looked like a natural goal scorer. He looked like he knew what he was doing with the puck. That doesn't discount what Sam Annis has done, Travis St. Dennis, all these guys. They're wonderful hockey players. They're going to have a great year. But Thomas Aldworth, I feel as if he's going to lead the team in scoring. And now we're going to move on. Buy or sell, Michael Gartig will be the Bobcats X Factor this season. What do you think, Rob? So I'm going to sell that. The thing is, I know Gartig, he makes some big saves for the Bobcats, but in the end, you know, we mentioned Aldworth, we mentioned Annis, we mentioned St. Dennis. It's going to come more on them. They need to score for the Bobcats to win. Gartig's going to have to come up big in some of these games, but in the end, it's going to be on the Bobcats scoring because there's going to be some close games, but it's going to come down to more of the defense and uh, getting the puck out of the zone and scoring, you know, just scoring more goals, keeping the puck out of the zone. Gartig, you know, it's not going to fall as much on him. He's got to be ready, sure. But it's more up to the Bobcat, the, you know, the back-checking forwards when the puck's down in the defensive zone, even in the neutral zone, to get it back down. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but I feel like my point's sharp enough to do so. I feel as if Michael Gartig will be the X-Factor for this team this season simply because of how important goaltenders are in the NCAA tournament and how they are in the ECAC tournament as well. Look at who won the uh, championship last year. Providence. 
force you to go into the tournament, not a lot of people expecting them to win, and they row the back of their goaltender, John Gillies, who's now a uh, Calgary Flames prospect. He had an exceptional postseason. If the Bobcats want to do well in the NCAA championship, if they want to go on a deep run, they're going to need Michael Gartig to play well. And that's not something he's shown for us so far. He's had his flashes of greatness, but he's also had flashes of disappointment. And he needs to be great if they want to do well in either tournament. Yeah, he's very inconsistent. So that's why I think the Bobcat defense needs to step up and they can't let it fall on him this year. But if it does, and I feel as if it will, because those things happen as a goaltender, those things do occur. You have your two-on-ones, you have your breakaways. You need to stand on your head, win your team a few games. That's just something that he has to do if this team wants to move on. And that's why he, uh, I feel as if he's the X factor. That's why I'm buying that. He needs to go out there and perform well if this team wants to have any postseason success. That's something that they did when they went to the championship a few years ago and lost to Yale eventually in the championship round. They had a, a very hot goaltender at the time. Now Michael Gartig, he has the opportunity to go out there and do something for his team. He's had his flashes of greatness that we've talked about, but just not enough to win in postseason. Yeah, time. but to argue that, I mean, Eric Hartzell got on a very hot streak. The Bobcats, when they saw that he got hot, they were really, they sort of sat back and let him make the big saves he needed to make. Sure, they had good offensive defense as well, but the Bobcats, I don't think they can put their full trust in him. They know they need to back check. They can't rely on him and expect him to make every single save. All right, well, let's move on real quickly. The Bobcats will make the NCAA tournament again this year. Do you buy or sell that idea? I buy that. I think this team is good enough to go there. You know, Aldworth definitely has shown us some flash of greatness so far. And then, like I said, Annis, St. Dennis, all the other players coming back. Devontae's key defenseman. I think the team, because of all their returners and some of the flash of greatness we've seen from the freshmen so far this year, they are going to make the NCAA tournament. Well, for once, I can agree with you. I absolutely buy the fact that they will make the NCAA tournament this year. Right now, currently ranked 19th in the polls. Not a very high number. Only 16 teams end up making it. But this team has a lot to prove. And I absolutely think that they will make the NCAA tournament on the backs of these players, as you mentioned. We'll see if Michael Garte can step up and do well. But like we mentioned, they have great offensive players. Thomas Aldworth, Sam Annis, Travis St. Dennis. They all have that same uh, mindset that they can go out there and perform well and make the postseason. Last year, disappointing loss to North Dakota. It happens. They ran into a very good team. That's just fuel to the fire. These guys can go out there, do something, and get to the NCAA tournament. And I truly believe that they can go on a run in that tournament. All right, we both believe that. How about the Frozen Four? I'll be honest, I'm going to sell for once. I sell the idea of them making the Frozen Four. I can't see it happening unless Michael Garte goes out there and proves to me that he can be that X factor, be the difference, stand on his head. We talked about the ability of art, of, uh, excuse me, of the men's hockey team to score goals. They have very solid defensive core back there. But Michael Gartig is still my X factor. And as of right now, I don't have enough from him to prove that they can go on a deep run with him. They can go on a good run, but a deep run, he hasn't shown it to me yet. Well, coincidentally, we agree once again. I do not see them going to the Frozen Four again. It's, it's still, they have some young players. And like I said, with the ECAC coming this season, yeah, they're going to make the NCAA tournament. But you got all these teams who are watching them. They're going to scout them, and if they run into a hot team like North Dakota again, or even if they get a close regional game where they don't have to travel, but they're going to face a tough hockey East team, you never know what can happen. I think maybe they make it, uh, they win the, re or, uh, win the first game of the regional bounce, see them going past that regional championship game. Coming up after the break, field hockey and men's soccer are in the home stretch of their season. We'll discuss how we think they'll do. Plus, our games to watch for and our step-up and sit-down picks of the week. We'll be right back. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at A Sheer Sensation. My name is Doug Thoreau. For nearly 90 years, three generations of my family have been providing the highest quality repair service. Insurance companies will refer car owners to lesser quality shops to save money. At Thoreau Auto Body, we provide the highest quality repairs with a lifetime guarantee to maintain the safety and value of your car. That's the quality you deserve. Thoreau Auto Body, our best work goes unnoticed.
We are your source for entertainment news. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care. Cut styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. Welcome back to Bobcat Breakdown. Quinnipiac men's soccer won its first game of the season on Wednesday, defeating Mac opponent Manhattan 2-0. The Bobcats lost to Canisius on Saturday 1-0. The Bobcats now have a MAC record of 1-3-2. Every team this year will be in the MAC tournament, held at the Wide World of Sports Complex at Disney World. Rob, even though the Bobcats have struggled this year, can the Bobcats be successful in the MAC tournament despite their play so far? I thought after the win, maybe, but after the loss to Canisius, I'm not convinced, Andrew. That what, They played the worst team in the MAC in Canisius, and they lost, and they couldn't even get a goal on them. I'm not convinced. I think they're going to be have an early exit in the MAC tournament. Well, I've had the absolute pleasure of being able to call a majority of the men's soccer games this year for QBSN, and I've had the displeasure of having to watch every men's soccer game this year. And unfortunately... They just don't look good. They, as you mentioned, you know what? They had that 2 nothing win against Manhattan. That's huge. But the one nothing loss to Canisius? It's a team that was 0-5 in the conference. It's a team that was not projected to do well at all. And it's just absolutely disappointing to see that they finished 1-0 loss to Canisius with eight shots total, only one on net. One shot on net against the worst team in the MAC. There's no way I can see them doing well in the tournament if that's the kind of performance you put up against the worst team in your conference. And that, I mentioned that with the women's soccer team, too. It's the shots on goal. If you're not putting the ball on the net, how's it going to go in? you got to get, get it on the net, even keep it low. Get some deflections going in front. The Bobcats want to have a prayer in getting another win this season and doing well in the MAC tournament. It's just, you know, like you said, one shot on goal out of eight total shots in the game. It's not going to cut it. It's been a struggle for them this season. You know, it's under, you know, you see that they've been struggling earlier in the season, but, you know, they get that first win out of the way. It only takes one to start a hot streak, but then against Canisius, against the worst team in the MAC, I mean, that might bring them right back down to where they were to start the season. And they've had two major problems this year, goal scoring and giving up goals in the second half. Goal scoring, they've had a lot of good chances the last game against Canisius aside. They've had many good chances, but missing open nets, shooting it right into the goalkeeper's mitts, it's just not good. It's just... It's hard to describe this. It leaves me speechless about how dreadful of a performance that they put on when they go out there and they have these shots, these wide-open shots. I watched the game the other day against Canisius, and Nick Lazarus comes in on the right side with a beautiful opportunity to cross it in, fires it 30 feet over the net, at least over the net in vertical height. You're giving up great opportunities by just misplaying the ball, and these small mistakes lead up to a lot of losses. And the MAC tournament, if you make a mistake, it's going to cost you. The second major thing for me, Tristan Henry and a very aggressive goaltender. At times it works out for him, other times he gives up a goal. And that's just been a problem for them all year. And especially in the second half when they've been tired, they have their starters out there a long time, it adds up to not a lot of goals scored and a lot of goals conceded. So Quinnipiac Field Hockey defeated Sacred Heart 3-2 in overtime on Friday. On Sunday they defeated Siena 4-2. They have a 3-0 conference record and their final four games are against MAC opponents. Will the Bobcats finish at the top of the MAC? Yeah. Definitely. I will put a lot of money on that if possible because honestly, their tough non-conference schedule that Coach Beckham made schedule for them was a huge help. They didn't do too well in those games, but that trained them for the MAC, those tough opponents. And it was certainly a great call by Coach Car uh, Coach Beckham made, excuse me. You know, I think the Bobcats were ready for conference play. And you look at the way they've been playing right now, they are definitely to finish at the top of the MAC. I have no doubt in my mind, and they're going to do well in the MAC tournament. Once again, we can agree on something. To me, this team, they look very inconsistent in the non-conference schedule. Back and forth, wins, losses. They had positives in their wins and negatives in their losses that just didn't seem to go together. Their conference play so far, however, has completely changed my vision on this. Megan Conboy's been an absolute stud in net for the well, women's field hockey team. And then, of course, you have Angie King, who's been an absolute legend. For, I mean, we're watching a legend for Quinnipiac, probably the best player in field hockey history at this school, just go in, play, and do a fantastic job. And overall, just those two leading the team, along with the seniors that have been there for a while, 
I can't see how they don't finish on top of the Mac. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Angie King, she just doesn't seem to stop. She's been the lead, basically the leader for this team. The way, with all the records she's been breaking, her play this season, she, you could just tell she has that leadership mentality when she plays, and definitely a reason why the field hockey team is doing so well. And, you know, why, like I said, we both think they're going to finish at the top of the Mac. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Angie King breaking records. Well, she's done a great job of that so far, especially look at her defensive saves. If you look online, NCAA stat leaders, Angie King defensive saves, more than double the next highest uh, woman. She's just fantastic. She's doing a great job on the back end for the field hockey team. And then Megan Conaboy has been even better in net. And when you have solid defense like that, it's hard to score on them. It's hard to lose games. All right, well, looking ahead to next week, let's move on to our games to watch for. What is your game to watch for? My game to watch for, women's soccer traveling to Iona on Saturday, the 24th. It's going to be a big game for them. You know, Iona, not necessarily a great team in MAC conference, but these are games that the women's team needs to win if they want to move on and go into the MAC tournament. Currently seventh place in the MAC, and they need to be in the top six to move on to the tournament. That's just a huge game, and they really need to win these games that are must-wins if they want to move on and get into the tournament. And that's my game of the week to watch. For me, it's men's hockey. We they got two games at home this weekend against St. Cloud. They, have it, they played them last year at St. Cloud over winter break. They lost the first game 3-2 to two and won game 2 4-1. to one. Then they faced them again in the Frozen 4 in 2013. Also a 4-1 to one win for the Bobcats. This is going to be a very interesting matchup. St. Cloud currently number 12 in the polls. Bobcats number 17. I think it's going to be a great non-conference matchup. Great scheduling uh, made by the coaching staffs of both teams. Definitely going to test the Bobcats this weekend before they begin conference play uh, the first weekend of November. I'm looking forward to those games, Rob. It's time to move on to our step up and sit down segment. And Rob, it's tough to pick sit down players after a successful week for Quinnipiac Athletics. The only stain on this week's schedule was the men's soccer loss to Canisius yesterday. But let's start with step up players. Rob, who's your pick? I'm gonna say Devontae is the men's hockey team. He's had a hot start to the season and then the ASU game, he had a goal and an assist. He's looking good, definitely taking leadership, showing why he is deserving of being an NHL draft pick. He has been a key player for the Bobcats in his years here so far, and he's just continuing it this season. How about you? Well, my step-up player is going to be the eventual point uh, leader for the men's hockey team, Thomas Aldworth. A fantastic week for him against ASU. He finished with three points. Overall, he's just been an absolute stud for the men's hockey team. I'm looking forward to watching him in future games. He's been my step-up player. And what about your sit-down player, Rob? My sit-down, I don't have a sit-down player, I have a sit-down team, and that's the women's ice hockey team. They tied Western, the Western Mustangs one-to-one -one on Saturday, an exhibition game against the Canadian College. They outskated this team for almost the entire game, Andrew, and it's disappointing to see them come away with a tie. It doesn't matter that it's an exhibition game. They, had, they outshot them 46-9, to nine, and they still only put up one goal. Megan Turner, you know, being alert, and getting the puck, you know, getting a loose puck and putting it in. The Bobcats, they were, like I said, they were skating all over them. That second line of Wood, Sion, Ferrano, and Samuskevich, they should have had four goals that day. Yeah, it was an absolute disappointment to see that. My sit down, well, I can't pick one player in particular, so I ended up picking the men's soccer forwards. The one nothing loss to Canisius, only one shot on net on eight total shots. Just overall missing chances, missing everything, and just not looking good doing it. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Be sure to check out Q30television.com and TheQBSN.com for more coverage on Quinnipiac Athletics. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Q30Sports and at QBSN. And be sure to tune in to QBSN's broadcast this week. All links will be tweeted out. And don't forget to check out the latest edition of QBSN, the magazine. Pick up a hard copy around campus or read it online at theqbsn.com. For the crew behind the scenes and the man sitting next to me, Andrew Weiss, I'm Rob Siambra. Thanks for watching.